is Salvation Night Watch. And without wasting much of our time, I want us to read Revelation chapter 20, verses 6 to 8. Revelation chapter 20, verses 6 to 8. I read, Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Tonight, in our Salvation Night Watch, we want to talk something on the first and second resurrection. What do you understand by the first and second resurrection? The Bible here is telling us that blessed are those who take part in the first resurrection. Now, what is the first resurrection? What makes it to be special that those who take part in the first resurrection must be blessed? And if I continue to verse uh, 7, the Bible says, Now, when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle whose number is at the sand of the sea. And the Bible is talking about 1,000 years meaning that those who take part in the first resurrection, they shall be with the Lord for 1,000 years. What does this 1,000 years mean? In our text, the Bible is talking about uh, some of the parts which will be uh, happening in the end times. In the end times, there are events which will be happening. And one of those events is the millennium reign of Jesus. And the Bible says during the millennium reign of Jesus, what will happen is that those who take part in the first resurrection will rule together with the Lord for 1,000 years. My question tonight is, will you be part of those learning together with the Lord for 1,000 years? Will you be among those who take part in the first resurrection? Maybe you do not understand what first resurrection means. But tonight, I want you to understand what it means by the first resurrection and the second resurrection. And that we have the first resurrection and the second resurrection, it also means we have first death and second death. Before I continue explaining, let us also read another scripture. John chapter 5 verses 28 and 29. The Bible says, Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves will hear his voice and come forth those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the, to the resurrection of condemnation. Now the Bible is telling us that there will be the two resurrection and of those two resurrection there will be the resurrection of life and then there will be a resurrection of condemnation. Meaning that the first resurrection will be the resurrection of life. And then the second resurrection will be the resurrection of condemnation. That's the resurrection of death. Let me explain now. The Bible teaches us that Jesus is coming and is coming for those who are ready. And you are ready for the coming of Jesus if you have the Holy Spirit inside your heart. If the Holy Spirit is inside your heart, that means you are ready for the coming of Jesus. The coming of Jesus is in two phases. Jesus 
is coming to pick all who are his, to pick his bride. And during his coming, what we call rapture, is not coming to step on this earth. That's what we call rapture. There's rapture and then the second coming of Jesus. Rapture is when Jesus will just be in the air. And then the people who are led, the people who have the Holy Spirit inside their heart, the Christians who have the Holy Spirit inside their heart, they will be the first one to rise in the air. In fact, the Bible tells us that there are some people who died in Christ. When we read Thessalonians chapter, chapter 4, verses 13 to 16, we hear the Bible is teaching us that those people who first died, but they died in Jesus, they died in Christ, they will be the first ones to rise and meet the Lord in the air. And those are the people whom we call they will benefit, or those are the blessed, which means they will partake in the first resurrection. The first resurrection is for those people who rise first, those who died in Christ, they will rise and meet the Lord in the air, and they are blessed. Because when they rise and meet the Lord in the air, then those people who are now alive, and it's time for rapture, Jesus has come, has appeared in the air, then those people who are now alive will join those people who are in the air with the Lord, those who died in Christ. That means those who died in Christ have resurrected. That, that's the first resurrection. And that's why the Bible uh, in Revelation uh, chapter 20, the Bible says, Blessed are those who take part in the first resurrection. The first resurrection is for all those people who died in Christ and all the saints, starting with Abel. Abel died in Jesus. So, starting with Abel, all those saints, including those who are dying now, those who are dying in Christ, they will partake in the first resurrection. My question for you is, if you die today, if you die, are you going to die in Christ? Because many times we speak about the coming of Jesus and we say, Jesus is not coming. Jesus has not yet come. What is happening? But the point is, even if Jesus is not coming, even if Jesus is drained, though the Bible says Jesus is drained because of you, he wants you to change first. But even if Jesus is drained, if you die in Christ, or if you see people dying, you must be asking yourself, has this person died in Christ? If he or she has died in Christ, that means we will partake in the first resurrection. Now, Jesus has appeared in the air, time of rapture, and then those people who died in Christ, they resurrect, first resurrection and they meet the Lord in the air. And then those who are still alive, they will, they will be raptured and meet the Lord in the air. What will carry them and meet the Lord in the air is the Holy Spirit inside their heart. Now, is the Holy Spirit inside your heart? Because if the Holy Spirit is inside your heart, that means you are ready for the coming of Jesus. And are you ready for the coming of Jesus? You are ready if the Holy Spirit is inside your heart. That means the same Holy Spirit who is inside your heart will carry you and meet the Lord in the air. In fact, when we talk about rapture, we are talking about a time, an hour, when the Holy Spirit will be leaving this earth and going back where he came from, being with the Lord. Now, those people who have the Holy Spirit inside their heart, that means they will rise together and meet the Lord in the air. That is rapture. That is the first event in the end times timetable. Once the brides of Jesus or the Christians where our lady have been raptured, there is something which is going to happen here on earth and there is something which is going to happen in heaven. Let me start with here on earth. 
here on earth, what means the Holy Spirit has left the earth. And if the Holy Spirit has left the earth, that means no more protection. That means no more power of the Holy Spirit. That means the ruler now of this world will be Satan himself. That means the great tribulation will now start here on earth. The 666 you hear about, that will be the time which will be happening here on earth. People will not be allowed to buy. People will not be allowed to move around without the mark, the mark of the beast. This is your time for you to be marked with the Holy Spirit. If you are not marked with the Holy Spirit, that means you will be marked with the label of the beast. That is 666. So, here on earth there will be the great tribulation for seven years. And in heaven, there will also be two things happening for that seven years. The first half, there will be what I can call the wedding ceremony. The Bible talks about the wedding ceremony. You know, Jesus is coming uh, here on earth uh, for rapture to appear in the air to pick who are his, his bride. So, which means those who have been raptured are like the bride of Jesus. And what will happen is that there will be that kind of a ceremony to celebrate the brides of Jesus, like that wedding where the bride will be yoked with the bridegroom who is Jesus himself. And are you that bride of Jesus? And are you ready to celebrate with Jesus in the that a heavenly marriage in heaven? You need to be ready. And you are ready if the Holy Ghost is inside your heart. Another thing, in heaven there will be rewards. There will be rewards at the Bema seat. It is not enough for you to be saved. But as you are saved, remember that in heaven, two questions will be asked of you once you die or once you are raptured. The first question will be, I gave you Jesus. What did you do with him? So it is the question that talks of your salvation. Have you been saved? So all those who uh, have been raptured, that means they know they have been saved. But it doesn't end there. Another question will be, I gave you some gifts, I gave you talents, I gave you experiences, I gave you energy, I gave you your work, I gave you money, I gave you resources. What did you do with what I gave you? Did you just use them for yourself? Or you used them for the kingdom come? Or you used them to recruit many blinds for Jesus? Or you used your money to recruit more blinds for Jesus for this day? It is not enough to be saved. You need to start working for Jesus. Start using your money for at least doing something in the Lord. That you cannot preach, it doesn't mean you cannot do something in the kingdom of God. Everyone is a minister in the kingdom of God. As you take your money and contribute towards a crusade for someone to preach, that means you have ministered as well. You have ministered by giving. So the question will be, I gave you money, I gave you prosperity, I gave you energy, I gave you talents, I gave you the gift of singing, I gave you the gift of prophecy, I gave you the gift of prayer. What did you do with what I gave you? And that which you are going to show will automatically give you a reward. That's why even in heaven, there are some people who are living also in a thatched house. And there are some people who are living in a house that has maybe electricity or that has a lot of looms. Even in heaven, it is happening as well. There will be rewards of what you did here on earth. What are you doing here on earth for the kingdom of God? Remember, those are some of the events that will be happening in heaven. For seven years, there will be rewards at the Pema seat, and then there will be a celebration, the wedding ceremony of the bride of a Christian of the church and Jesus Himself. And once that one has been done, what will happen now is what we call the second coming of Jesus. The second coming of Jesus is not rapture. The second coming of Jesus 
is when now Jesus himself will now come down here on earth with the church, with those raptured Christians who come here on earth and rule for 1,000 years. That will be after the battle between those who are here on earth, the rule of Satan and the church and Jesus himself. There will be that fight and then the, the church and Jesus will win that battle and they will settle here on earth and rule here on earth for 1,000 years. That's why in Revelation, the Bible says, Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such, the second death has no power. We'll talk about the second death. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall learn with him a thousand years. They shall learn with him a thousand years. That means it will be the second coming of Jesus here on earth. During rapture, Jesus is not going to step here on earth. He's just going to be in the air, waiting for the church, waiting for his blood. But during the second coming, it will be the church and Jesus coming here on earth and rule for 1,000 years. And then after 1,000 years, what is going to happen is when the, uh, is when the devil uh, is going to uh, be released. You know, during that battle of, uh, of the church and the devil and Satan himself, what will happen is that the devil, Satan, will be put in a pit waiting for judgment, waiting for judgment day. So the devil will be put in a pit. Now, after 1,000 years, the devil will be brought back here on earth. And during that time, the Bible says, the devil or Satan will deceive some. But after that, the devil will be thrown now in what we call the lake of fire. And after the devil has been thrown in a lake of fire, is when there will be that what we call the second resurrection. The second resurrection is for those people who died in sin. If you die today in sin, that means your body will be in the grave and your soul will be in hell. Now, during rapture, you are not going to resurrect. It is only those who died in Christ, they will resurrect and meet the Lord in the air. That's what we call the first resurrection. And now, at the last hour, after the 1,000 ruling, after the millennium lane, there will be what we call the second resurrection. It is now the resurrection of the of those who died in sin. I pray for you that you do not take part in this resurrection. This is the resurrection. The Bible calls calls it the resurrection of condemnation and not the resurrection of life. What? The reason the Bible calls it the, the resurrection of condemnation, it is because the people will rise not to live, but they will rise to face second death. The Bible talks of first death and second death. First death is the death of the body. That's why when we read the Bible in Matthew chapter 10, verse 28, the Bible says, Do not be afraid of him who kills only the body, but has no light to kill a soul. But you must, you must be fearing he who kills both the body and a soul. So, as a Christian, as Christians, we are not supposed to be afraid of uh, the first death, the death that we know, the death that only kills the body. But we must be afraid of that death that kills uh, a soul. And what is that death that kills a soul? You know, those people who are going to resurrect in the second death, the resurrection of the condemnation, it means they will only be, they will only resurrect to be judged, 
to be shown what they were doing here on earth and then to be thrown in the lake of fire. That's now the second death. Second death is that throwing of those who died in sin to be thrown in the lake of fire. I pray that you do not partake in this kind of death. You do not partake in this kind of resurrection. You resurrect as first in the mighty name of Jesus. May that grace of salvation be upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus. May that grace of salvation be upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus. Those who died in Jesus will not face the second death. They will resurrect in the first resurrection and live forever. That's why it is also called the resurrection of life because you resurrect to live. That's why the Bible says, don't be afraid of this death if you are a Christian because you do not die. You only sleep and then you wake up and live forever. I pray for you that you will live forever in the mighty name of Jesus. May that grace of salvation be upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus. And are you ready to partake in the first resurrection? You are only ready to partake in the first resurrection when the Holy Spirit dwells inside your heart. Remember that the Holy Spirit manifests in a person in three ways. The first manifestation is when the Holy Spirit is with you. The Holy Spirit with you is just taking you to church. Is the convicting Holy Spirit. He only reminds you that you must go to church. You must go to places where they are teaching the word of God. Just as I am teaching here. When the word convicts you, that Holy Spirit will now stop walking with you. Will now dwell inside your heart. Each time you are listening to the word of God, all what the Holy Spirit wants is to be inside your heart. That's why when we read Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, the Bible says, Jesus, here I am. I am knocking at the door of your heart. If you open, I will enter and give you life and chat with you. Each time you are listening to the word of God, Jesus is like knocking at the door of your heart. If you open your heart, if you believe the word, if you repent, if you start doing the word, that means you are opening your heart for Jesus to be inside your heart. Jesus is coming. Allah, are you ready? It is time to make up your mind. It is time to say, from now onwards, I'll start doing the word. It's time to say, from now onwards, I want to make Jesus as my Lord and Savior. You know, the Bible says, if you believe and confess that Jesus is Lord, it is only then you can be saved. When we read Philippians chapter 2 verse 11, the Bible says, every tongue shall confess the name Jesus. And then if you confess the name Jesus, that Jesus is Lord, it is only then you can be taken to another step of saying you are the child of God. When we read John chapter 12 verse 42, we hear of some people whom the Bible calls them, they say they believed, but they were they, they were afraid of confessing the name of Jesus, being afraid of the Pharisees. Remember, you can have your parents, you can have those around you or the workplaces you are working. You are believing, you are listening to the word and you are believing that yes, Jesus is my savior, Jesus is Lord. You have believed, but you are failing to confess the name Jesus is Lord. You will miss your salvation. Don't be afraid of anyone. You must be bold enough to confess the name Jesus. Remember in Matthew chapter 10, verse 33, Jesus was speaking that if anyone denies me here in front of these people, I shall also deny him in front of my father. You shall not be that kind of a person to be denied by the father. I pray for the grace to believe in the word and I pray for the grace to proclaim the Lord Jesus upon your life in the mighty name of Jesus. God wants you to be ready for his son. Jesus is coming and is coming for those whose the Holy Spirit is inside your heart. And I want you to be ready. And I pray for you tonight. 
that you take salvation seriously you take your salvation seriously in the mighty name of jesus may that grace of salvation be upon your life and may this grace of salvation not just be on you but even your relatives those friends around you in the mighty name of jesus Thank you.